Hi all. This week, we focus on processes of cell division. These processes are vital for keeping a body of cells alive and for the act of reproduction. For example, a sea urchin starts off as a single cell, a single fertilized egg. That egg undergoes cell division to form a two-celled embryo, as can be seen in the photo on the left. Those two cells divide to form a four-cell embryo. Those cells divide to form eight cells, then 16, as can be seen in the middle photo, and so on, until an adult sea urchin made of millions of cells is produced. A similar process is involved in the development of a single fertilized human egg through many rounds of cell division to produce a baby who is born with a body made of tens of trillions of cells. One of the amazing things about that process of embryological development is that every one of those millions of urchin cells is identical to every other one of that urchin cells. The same is true of human babies and adults. All the cells of a person's body are clones of one another. That means the cells are genetically identical. These are human karyotypes. Each karyotype is the picture of the chromosomes in that person's cells. Here we can see three karyotypes, dads, moms, and childs. Human karyotypes usually show 23 pairs of chromosomes, or 46 total. We'll make use of these karyotypes as we discuss the processes of cell division. Since one of the hallmarks of cell division in a single organism's body is gen genetic identicalness, as compared to the genetic variation that is characteristic of sexual reproduction to produce the next generation, We'll start by defining some genetic terms. The genome is all of the DNA in a cell of an organism's body. DNA is the molecule that organisms use to encode genetic information. So an organism's genome represents the organism's total genetic composition. A chromosome is one molecule of DNA and proteins that the DNA is wrapped on. Each chromosome is like a cookbook of protein recipes called genes. A gene is a recipe to make a protein, as I just said. Proteins are really important for proper cellular function. They're so important that we have a dedicated library of recipes, genes, to make them. Homologous chromosomes are chromosomes that have the same genes in the same order and location. We can say that the human genome consists of 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes. When you look at this karyotype, you can envision that this is a person's genetic library. It's actually two matching libraries. One set of 23 cookbooks or chromosomes came from mom, and a matching set of 23 cookbooks came from dad. Each cookbook has a few hundred to a few thousand recipes or genes encoded along its length. A cell is said to be diploid when it has a pair of each chromosome, as this karyotype shows. For human cells, the diploid number is 46 chromosomes. A cell is said to be haploid when it has only one of each type of chromosome. For humans, the haploid number is 23 chromosomes. We'll use this, these terms as we discuss the rest of the concepts from chapter 6 and 7. In the next video, we'll look at the somatic cell cycle, the orderly process of cellular reproduction that is used to maintain tissues of our body.